TLO, what's pop? We are on kick, K I C K dot com. We are not live, but you can still leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Ooh, got a new hat, by the way. Feel me? Other ones smoke like armpit and on hockey helmets. Um, anyway, this is the live channel, man. If we go live, you happen to miss it, any highlights will be there. We do got the merch. Got it on myself. You get me. Uh, anybody who ordered, it is on the way. All orders are sent out. Don't forget we got the Patreon. Going to record for this today after I'm done with these YouTube videos. And don't forget the Discord, man. I think the link to all of this is down below in the chat. I mean, not in the chat. Wow. Down below in the description. It's a link tree down there. Just click it and, you know. Brands Home. UK's most dangerous, poorest, and largest council estate explored. Okay. This is by UK Explored. Salute to him. Welcome to UK Explored. In this video, we are exploring an area called Bransholm, which is located on the north side of Kingston upon Hull, oh, in the East Riding area of Yorkshire. Now, Bransholm is an interesting area with a colorful history. But I'm not even gonna lie. As the soon as the camera start to got to exploring, it looked like the ghetto. Like this is the first time I watched up that I'm like, yeah, no, nah, we here, we in there today. But for a lot of the wrong reasons, to be honest. Bransholm is actually one of the largest council estates in Europe, let alone the UK, and it's also one of the most deprived areas in the UK. And with a population of around 18,500, it has far exceeded the number of residents the housing was originally built for, and it has become overcrowded. To give you an idea of just how vast this estate is, there are seven primary schools, two secondary schools, two large shopping centers, some smaller shopping districts, loads of entertainment stuff like a cinema and bowling alley. So there's plenty of jobs there. There are pubs, restaurants, a youth center, police station and more. Let's start by looking at the housing. Most of the housing in Bram's home was built in the late 60s, early 70s, although there are some new- Is that barbed wire? Is that barbed wire? <laughs> Listen, is that barbed wire or is that overgrown trimming from a hedge or some type of nature? Newer builds usually around the outskirts, and there has been some refurbishment done over the years, of course. But the two main hubs of antisocial behavior centered around the two high-rise tower blocks. You have Padstow House, which you can see here. This is a 17-story tower block containing 90 flats. I've been trying to work on my uh, thumbnails. That was a thumbnail. It's a thumbnail. This block was last refurbished in 1994, and it looks like there's gonna be some more social housing popping up around it. The other high rise is called Gatwick House, and this is situated a little further to the east, and it's the same build with the same number of flats. Now, living in council tower blocks. You don't know nobody that live in there? I be trying to get a flat tour, like take me inside, knock on a door or something. Comes with its fair share of problems. And in these blocks, there have been fires that could easily have spread and been catastrophic. Many of the residents have- Brand's home tower block flat destroyed by fire as other residents watch TV. Dang, drug addicts and criminals putting a whole tower block residents like- well. Victims of crimes at the hands of other residents. And there's just a whole list of anti-social behavior going on. I've had a bit of flack on previous videos for stating that crime and high-rise tower blocks go hand in hand across the country, but it's just a fact. Yeah, when you see these right here, these type of like plan apparatuses, you definitely somewhere. And then they got like real like wood chips. I ain't seen a wood chip in, in 10 years. <laughs> there have been various <clears throat> social studies carried out all over the world that proves living in densely populated high-rise buildings does mean a higher crime rate than the more spacious traditional individual housing estates, as well as higher stress for the residents, poorer health, and in particular, it has a negative impact on children. 
I don't know, man. I know a lot of people that grew up in the hood, you know what I'm saying, grew up in the hood type of environment, including myself, and it's like, it, for a child, there's a bunch of other kids to play with. It's, it's kind of fun. I ain't, Maybe it's just Chicago that was just fun. <laughs> anyway, I'll put a link in the description to one of those studies if you are interested in looking at it further. Moving on across to the rest of the estate, there is a lot of terraced and semi-detached housing, much of which is built in this... I know this ain't no trailer park, Carl. There is a lot of terraced and semi-detached housing, much of which is built in this uniform manner, making parts of the estate feel very samey as you're walking around. The worst of the housing has been demolished over the years, but it's very obvious that much of Brands Holmes housing looks dated. It's bad luck. Because it is, and it is in poor condition. Whole city council have been forced to bring the housing stock up to the decent home standards over the years, but I'm not sure where they currently are on that timeline with this housing. There is some housing stock that is privately owned. The average house price over the last year was in the 144,000 range, with terrace houses going for as low. I'm thinking like 99,000. 100k. So looking at the crime, it really is the crime stats and some of the incidents over the years that has made Brands Home such a notorious estate. It's not anybody that's watching this from this area. Now, like, like this really looked like they, it got some poverty going on. Like this looked like, like, like we there fine. We've made it. I've watched a lot of these the videos and they have not been that bad. But this one. This one looking real familiar. Not easy getting the stats localized to just Brands Home, but data suggests that anywhere between 250 and 350 crimes a month. Like who knocked down the back gate? Um, it's typical. That's a. A lot of crime. It's Do it still work? Especially for just one estate, even though it's such a large estate like this. But it's the seriousness of many of the crimes that give Brams Homes its reputation. Some of the worst crimes over the years include... Whose hood is this? A mass gang armed with a gun, a hammer and a samurai sword burst into a drug den. They shot a man and they stole his cannabis stash. Another incident involved a man having a six hour standoff with police after forcing himself into one of his neighbor's houses. From there, he was threatening to chop up the police and take his own life. And a man was jailed for two years for deliberately reversing over his own mum in his taxi. All right, like I don't even know if she passed away, but it seems like it. But that's crazy. Like, what what did she do that was that bad? In addition to these, I mean, there are loads of reports you can go through. Some of the more recent ones and more regular incidents include teenagers go through. In addition to these, I mean, there are low. <laughs> she walked around the corner like, why are you filming me, mate? <laughs> of reports you can go through. Some of the more recent ones and more regular incidents include teenagers selling Class A drugs, that a Nissan, drink bro? driving incidents, the and there are even murders that happen on the estate. From walking around the estate for a morning myself, I can tell you that it's obviously a deprived area. That's so wait, are you not from there? You just walking around in there. Yeah, you struggling. You moving a little bit different, buddy. Obviously, the cost of living in recent years has affected a lot of people, and it often hits areas like this really hard. Although I don't doubt that there are plenty of decent, hardworking people Ooh, in Brands Home, many of which love living there, I bet. And I do want to state that for the record. It does feel very fortified walking around, which I guess is a good thing. More barbed wire, like what's going on? Most of the houses have high fences that you can't even see over. The shops and schools, etc., have barbed wire going around the top. It's little things like that that remind you that you're not on a safe estate. Honestly, I'd like to try my luck at one or two of the pubs on a Friday night if I was in the area. I bet I'd meet some characters. But anyway, if you do or have lived in Brands Home, I'd love to hear about your experiences. Feel free to drop a comment below. Even if you haven't lived there, we still appreciate any insights and feedback you have on what you've just seen. Please hit that like button and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, no, it looked terrible over there. I ain't even gonna lie. This, this is one of the most terrible looking housing places that I've seen thus far.
And it might not even be that bad if you live in there, but for me from the outside looking in, this one looked the worst I've seen so far, I think. It's probably fun, though. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.